G'day guys, Matt here, and welcome to another track guide, thanks to Sim Rigs. This week we are at Circuit Zolder for round two of the GT3 Fix series. Really cool little track, about four kilometers, ten corners, it's got some hard high speed stuff, it's got some slow speed stuff, got some curbs you can chuck the car over, it's got a bit of everything which makes a, some really good racing. The temperature this week will be about 26 to 27 degrees track temp and about 18 degrees ambient temp and the in sim time will be midday on the 26th of March 2022. So it might be some variance in that but that will be um, the roundabout temperatures in the official sessions this week. Um, I'm running the iRacing Sprint setup this week so I'm not quite sure what the actual uh, whether it's going to be a high downforce or a medium downforce, so we'll just stick with the sprint setup for this week. As usual, we'll do some braking markers and some lines. There's a couple of corners on Zolder that don't really have any notable uh, braking boards, like the 100 or the 50 boards, so we'll look at some, um, some points on the track for, of reference that we can use for our braking markers. So let's, uh, let's not talk anymore, let's get stuck into it and I'll see you guys out on track wanting to get a good run onto the front straight to begin our flying laps. Staying to the right hand side of the track, setting up for turn number one. We're going to be braking a little bit after the 100 meter board. Down into third gear, trail braking to about here, then off the throttle, onto the throttle, sorry. Accelerating hard out of one, into two. There's no real um, braking marker board here, so. I aim for braking just about at the um, kitty litter or the sand trap on the left hand side that you can see straight ahead. So just about as the car's getting to that, I've got to click down from fourth into third. Coasting through. When you start picking the throttle up, using all the available track, running the car out to the curb. Not necessarily having to hit the curb here on three, wanting to stay to the left hand side setting up for no, for turn number four braking just as this we hit this bit of turf on the left hand side a little bit of a safety brake fourth gear trail braking pretty much to the apex here then off being wanting to be quite gentle and smooth with our throttle pickup not wanting to end up uh, in the dirt on the left hand side of the track quite a fast corner through there the rear of the car can get a little bit loose now coming into turn number five, the chicane, or the first of the chicanes, breaking just after the 100 meter board, or just at the 100 meter board, depends on how comfortable you feel. Then from fifth into third, then into second, not wanting to get any of this first left hand curb, but getting a little bit on the exit curb as the car's straightened, wanting to drive sort of like a straight line out bet between the curbs getting a good exit out of five and down into six and seven. Cresting the hill, coming into six, flat out. Now braking for seven in between the ripple strip on the left and the end of the white curb behind the car at the moment. I'll put an image up on the screen that you guys can see. Wanting to use a little bit more of this first right hand curb to open up the left-hander but not wanting to take too much of the left-hander and risking a 1x you can get 1x's quite easily there now we're slowly starting to peel the power on the car can get quite loose here really screaming for some traction after we've got to 100% throttle you can be 100% all the way out of 7 100% through 8 running it all the way out to the curb coming into the hairpin at turn nine. Braking from fifth down into first at the 100 meter board, hard braking. Gonna be trail braking just to the apex then starting to wean off that throttle. And then wanting to open up the wheel as quick as possible and drive hard out of the hairpin at nine. 10, flat through 10, just a little, little zigzag, not much. And then the last chicane, which is turn 11. Breaking just at the 100 meter board. Fifth, fourth, third, second gear. 
wanting to use the curb on the left hand side it will be a bit bumpy but that means we're opening up the right hand side and as we've turned the car in we're wanting to start just applying that throttle on and opening the wheel so we can get good traction on the exit of the corner not wanting to risk uh, getting bad drive out there and being swamped into T1. So let's try and put some of these points into practice, uh, go for a hot lap and see what we can do. Alright guys, we've bolted some fresh tyres on, let's go for a hot lap of Circuit Zolder. Wanting to get a good start to the lap from the exit of the Turn 10 chicane. Feed that power on, try not to get any wheel spin. Start the lap on the right hand side of the track, fifth in the third for turn one. Feeding that power on, fourth to third for turn number two. Missed the apex by a little bit there. Flat out for turn number three, leaving it in fourth for turn four. Letting the car settle before we start feeding that power back on. Fifth into second for turn five. Six easy flat down the hill. Start feeding that power on for the exit of seven. Flat out for turn eight, easy flat. And fifth into first for the turn nine chicane. Breaking out the 100 ball for the turn 10 chicane, 5th gear into 2nd. Little bit of wheel spin on the exit. Still managing to get a pretty decent lap there. Thanks for riding on board in the Sim Rigs BMW guys, it was good fun taking you guys around. The, uh, short circuit Zolder but uh, it may be short but it's certainly uh, packs a punch it's quite fun and you can have some really good racing around the uh, four kilometer ten corner circuit um, as usual uh, best to do some practice with your chosen cars figure out what brake bias is going to work for you I found around 51 to 51.8 to 51.5 work quite well on the BMW but obviously it's gonna be different for other cars. Same with your gear choice. So do some practice and find out what's gonna work for you. Also, I feel like it would be good to touch on uh, pit entry and pit exit. Uh, we'll bring up some images on the screen in relation to pit entry. Obviously it's quite a fast pit entry. It's not gonna be used much in the officials. Uh, hopefully you haven't got yourself a black flag for exceeding those X's limits. Uh, maybe you've got some damage and you need to take a stop. Uh, I've seen many a crash into uh, the pin entry here at Zolder, cars just not quite uh, judging the car in front of them turning for the chicane for turn 10 and just smashing straight into the back of them uh, and also have seen you know cars get hit from behind that are completely unaware of what's happening so you know if just keep an eye on what's happening obviously you want to be eyes forward focusing on the corner but you know want to be really aware of what's going on around that point especially if you are uh, entering the pit lane you really want to make sure that you're sensible and not just you know, uh, rear-ending 13 cars on your way to the pit lane. Also, pit en pit exit is quite tricky. It blends straight onto the racing line uh, for turn number two. So you really want to be mindful if you are exiting pit lane to make sure that you're aware of what's around you. Keep it on your relative. Make sure that you're not blending out straight onto um, the passenger door of another car, straight into the side of them, uh, ending both races. So definitely keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, it's been good fun taking you guys around this track uh, and I hope you guys enjoy your official racing in the GT3 Fix Series this week. Next week we will be back for Daytona for the GT3 Fix Series for round three. So I look forward to coming back and helping you guys hopefully gain a couple of tenths uh, learning Daytona. But I appreciate your time this week guys and look forward to seeing you guys next week for round three.